Hey, this is Casey. I'm One Mella Marigold. Let's face some garden fears today. Have you ever wanted to grow something but stopped yourself because you were afraid of killing the plant? If so, you're not alone. It is an extremely common reason why people don't start gardens or don't grow inside their homes. Um, my name is Casey. If you're sitting here visiting me for the first time, uh, I'm so happy you're here and I invite you to subscribe so you can see all the rest of my videos. Um, you, I hope in my videos, you will start to tell that I am just super passionate about growing. Um, I love gardens. I love helping people figure out how to grow things, especially food and vegetables and medicines and things that are sustaining to our lives. Um, gardening just has so many benefits across the scale that I just get really excited about all of them. And for those that want to garden, I would love to help ease some of those barriers for you if I can. So I have really committed to myself that in every video that I post, I'm gonna to try to address at least one accessibility issue. Um, and that could be finance, that could be mental health, that could be space, that could be climate. Um, that could be physical disabilities. That could be all sorts of things that prevent you from getting out and growing in your garden. So um, I hope you stick around and I hope you help me share your experiences and let's grow together and let's find a way to make gardening way more accessible for the masses. In order to make sure I was really getting good perspectives, I went out to my TikTok follower group. And if you don't follow me on TikTok yet, go ahead and follow One Mel Marigold. Um, she's great. <laughs> And so I went to my followers and I said, hey, if you are someone who loves to garden, if you follow me because you love watching gardening, but you don't do it yourself, why? What are your barriers? And I got tons and tons of feedback and all of it amazing and helpful and exciting. But let me tell you, the number one fear everybody brought to my attention was, I am afraid of killing plants. I'm afraid of killing plants. I used to have a cherry tomato plant. I killed it. I won't ever get another one. I had a zucchini plant once. Squash bugs ate it. I never did it again. Uh, I am afraid of killing plants was by far the number one reason folks gave me for not wanting to guard it. So let's talk about that today. As always, Oliver needs his frisbee thrown. <laughs> When we talk about a fear of killing plants, there's probably one of two things going on. First, you might really actually be afraid of killing plants. Maybe you had a bad experience with a plant uh, long ago. One of my followers shared that they had purchased a tomato plant and it grew three tomatoes and then got diseased and died and they felt horrible. Uh, they just felt really bad and so they never went back to growing after that. The second thing it could be though, is maybe not exactly a fear of killing the plant itself, but a fear of failure, a fear of not succeeding. Let's tackle number one first. First of all, first and foremost, the hard truth is, dear friends, that in all things living, in all things nature, we die. Things die. Nothing lives forever. Nothing, especially plants. In fact, when you think about growing a garden every year, Remind yourself that the plant is going to bloom in the beginning and it's going to die off at the end of the year. This is all part of nature. This is all part of the process. So you can't fight it. You can't stop it. Plants are going to die. You may need to sit with that and kind of just accept that a little bit. But when plants do die and you weren't planning for it or expecting it, it provides us with an awesome learning opportunity. And let me tell you, no gardener has ever grown a garden without killing a million plants. It is just a part of the actual learning process of gardening. So we gotta get you to embrace it. Let me show you a few things I killed this year. First up, sitting here right by my potato bin, uh, is no longer a Diplodania. She was gorgeous, she was beautiful, she had these beautiful, gorgeous, buttery yellow blooms. Um, took her inside for the winter like I was supposed to, and I let her get rit rot. And she got all sorts of roly polies, and they ate her, and she died. Next up are two jalapeno plants. You might be saying to yourself, Casey, those don't look dead. Yeah, because uh, they aren't mine. I did not grow these from seed. I grew eight jalapeno plants from a seed uh, and none are living. And I wanted jalapenos so bad I had to go out and buy starts. So yeah, killed my jalapenos. Look at these beautiful dahlias. One right next to it and then a third. And you might again say, Casey, what do you mean? You didn't kill those plants. Yeah, I didn't kill three, but I started the season with like eight or nine tubers. So I killed indeed a good eight or nine plants and ended up just putting squash where they would have been. 
and my most heartbreaking loss of the season so far are these two blueberry bushes. I've got one left sort of hanging on and I'm doing my best. In fact, I just did a video about trying to save my blueberries. Uh, but yeah, looking, uh, looking pretty dead. And I could go on and on forever. We haven't even started talking yet about how many seedlings I have killed over the years by rolling them over with my car. Yeah. So if your plant dies, you are not a plant murderer unless you're running around with a big old bottle of acid going hee 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 and spraying all your plants till they're dead. <laughs> Nature knows it's not intentional. Uh, what we do have to do though is we have to change our mindset, right? We have to accept that plant loss is going to happen and it's going to happen every year. We have to change our way of thinking to actually being comfortable and encouraging a little plant loss every now and again because that is how we are going to learn. So every death is an opportunity to learn something different. You might have to research whether that plant is growing in the right zone. You might have to research whether or not the soil needs a little bit of amendment. Um, you might have to find out if it was just too hot, too cold, too rainy, too wet in this particular season for that particular plant. Maybe it needs an insecticide. Maybe it needs a new fertilizer. There could be a million reasons why plants fail. And that's okay. You've just opened up a learning opportunity. What does all this mean, right? Um, take nature seriously. Uh, you are not gonna learn everything that you need to know from buying a book and reading it. Um, I am a book learner. <laughs> I like to study ahead. I was that kid in school. So, you know, the first time I decided to try to grow a tomato, uh, I read everything I could read to learn about tomatoes. I watched all sorts of YouTube videos. I did everything and I thought, I've got it. It's in my brain. I learned it. I can grow a tomato. Uh, and I think I grew four tomatoes that whole year and they were really small and ugly and awful. <laughs> but I learned from those plants because I said to myself, okay, this was just four. What did I do wrong? Did I water inconsistently? Did I give them enough food? Did I this? Did I that? Did I whatever? Those plants and I had a conversation. My garden and I have a relationship. We worked it out. Now I got a lot of tomatoes. On top of all that, the gardening community is really focused on production. So when you do go out and you start searching for YouTube videos on how to start a garden, you find some amazing creators out there. There are some amazing gardeners that I have learned a ton from on this app. But I will admit, we focus a lot on production. How do you grow 50 pounds of tomatoes this year? How to get your biggest corn ever? How to plant watermelons perfection? Da 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 da. And on and on and on. Doesn't have to be all about that. If we focus too much on actual production and less about the process, you're missing out the joy of the process and the learning that goes along with it. So all of those fears are valid and they are real and they really do keep people from growing and that is too bad but we got to push you over the edge right we got to get you moved on you want a garden i want to help you garden so let's go for it so what are we going to do to move forward so we're going to work on acceptance plants are going to die plants are going to die say it with me plants are going to die I am not a plant murderer, plants are gonna die. Not a plant murderer, plants are gonna die. You got it? Work on that, work on that. I'm gonna learn from every plant death. Mm -hmm. Positive affirmations for your gardening morning. Second, we are going to adjust our expectations for the garden. We are gonna accept that mother nature has us pegged. She knows what's going on. We have to listen to her and we have to learn from her. Um, we have to accept that sometimes we're just not gonna know everything. We all have to learn, we have to practice, we have to grow. It is no different for gardening than it is for learning to play the piano. If you don't practice and educate yourself and grow, you're not gonna succeed, right? We are gonna reduce our expectations of production. If we are in our first year of gardening, we are not gonna shoot for 50 pounds of tomatoes. We're gonna shoot for five pounds of tomatoes, or one pound of tomato, or just enough tomatoes to give you some salad toppings for the summer. We're gonna reduce all those expectations and we are gonna create an environment that is going to lead to garden success. 
listen, if I can do this, you can do this. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it doesn't have to happen overnight. It doesn't have to be at my scale and I don't have to be at anybody else's scale. Growing is amazing. It's changed my life. And if it's something you really want to do and learn about, don't let the fear stop you. Seek out information, seek out help, seek out support. The gardening community is amazing. We love to share. There is nothing we love more than talking about our plant babies, let me tell you. <laughs> so get out there. I hope this is encouraging you. Um, if you have experiences getting over your fear of killing plants, by all means, pop them in the comments below. Let's talk about it. I love a good discussion. If you have not found me on the TikTok, Go over and check out one of mellow marigold over there uh, if you found this video helpful go ahead and hit a like but of course subscribe if you want to see more content and i look forward to working with you as we address more garden accessibility i love you guys i'm gonna talk to you real soon okay bye